So Mr. Ellis asked me to share some thoughts on a booklet written by uh, David Edwin Harold uh, called The Emergence of the Church of Christ Denomination. Uh, so I want to share a couple of thoughts uh, of this. Uh, Dr. Harrell was here for lectures just a couple weeks ago. Uh, he's a professor emeritus uh, at Auburn University. Uh, got his PhD in Vanderbilt. Uh, has written several uh, books, uh, historical books, focus, historically focused books. Um, some on the Churches of Christ. Uh, some on uh, Pentecostalism. Um, he first came to prominence with a book that was, well, two books that were based off of work that he did for uh, his dissertation. Uh, the first was called Quest for a Christian America, and the second was uh, Social Sources of Division in the Disciples of Christ. For Dr. Harrell, one of the key things uh, to see about him is that he represents a, a shift, a modern shift, uh, in the history of the Restoration Movement, in thinking about not just theological reasons and logical motivations uh, for um, division uh, between the Disciples of Christ, the Churches of Christ, but thinking about sociological forces like economics, uh, class, um, even race to some extent, uh, as, as well as some other uh, focuses. The key thing to think about when asking this question of is there a Church of Christ or Churches of Christ denomination is the question of how are we defining denomination? Uh, how are we defining that kind of terminology? So when Dr. Harrell writes that in the middle of the 20th century, right, he's writing this, this booklet, uh, Emergence of the Church of Christ Denomination, he's writing it in uh, the 1960s. And so his larger question is, um, you know, is, is based off of defining uh, denomination sociologically and historically rather than perhaps theologically. And that can be a challenge for those of us that grew up in the Churches of Christ um, because many of us would have been taught and would have learned that uh, we weren't part of a denomination, uh, that the church as represented in the New Testament was non-denominational, and as we tried to restore or paint in the restoration, of New Testament Christianity, we were non-denominational. And so to hear someone within uh, the Churches of Christ um, say that we're a denomination, uh, you know, that, that always becomes a, a challenge for some people um, because, it, because of how long there's been an emphasis on, you know, the church is non-denominational. But what, what Dr. Harrell is doing is asking not so much a theological question, though in this booklet he does talk about some theological issues that were facing uh, Churches of Christ in the, the 1960s. He's asking a predominantly sociological question. In sociology, when sociologists and then historians influenced by sociology talk about terms like sect, and denomination, they are using those terms in ways to describe how does a religious group view themselves in comparison to other religious groups, and how does that how does a group uh, think about themselves in contrast or in comparison to the larger culture around them? So a sect, uh, according to that denomination, tends to be a split off from a, another religious group or set of religious groups that usually sees itself in opposition to culture and, and usually sees itself as a faithful remnant uh, in, in contrast to maybe a larger religious body that has capitulated or compromised with culture. A denomination, on the other hand, 
uh, in, the, in sociological and historical terminology, refers to a religious group that is much more comfortable within culture, um, doesn't see itself in as much of a you know, separation or distinction from culture, I still might say, you know, we have different values than the values of the world, but a denomination and people part of a denomination in the sociological sense are much more at home in the culture. They dress like the rest of the culture, talk like the rest of the culture, are involved in a lot of the same kind of things that the rest of the culture is involved in. And then also seeing itself in, in uh, comparison with other religious groups, there is much less of a tension between a denomination and other religious groups. Um, sometimes that can be to the point of saying, you know, the, that it is one group, one legitimate group among several legitimate groups, where a sect is going to say, right, we're, we're, uh, we are the true people uh, and others have, have fallen away. So when Dr. Harrell uses these terms, he's using sect, he's using denomination in ways in which uh, it's talking about this relationship to other religious groups and to, um, and to the culture at large. And so what Dr. Harrell argued in uh, his uh, original books, Quest for Christian America, but also especially Social Sources of Division, um, which we, we talked about in Restoration Movement. Uh, we, we spent some time talking about those social sources of, of the division between the Disciples of Christ and the Church of Christ. And so Dr. Harrell's contribution is saying that what took place in the dividing of the Restoration Movement was theological to some extent, there were there were differences about instrumental music. There were differences about located preachers. There were differences about whether you whether churches can cooperate together um, in in missionary work uh, and or a couple other issues, theological issues. But Dr. Harrell also also demonstrated that in, incorporated in those theological discussions was a variety of sociological forces like class and economics and region, you know, what, what part of the country, uh, what part of the United States you lived in, um, that had an important component to it, right? So that it becomes the disciples of Christ tended to be northerners, more middle class and upper class, um, and and were more open to uh, liberal ideas of, of religion. The group that became the Churches of Christ tended to be more Southern, tended to be poorer, uh, tended to be much more conservative theologically. Uh, that's not to say there weren't exceptions where there were some Northerners that were more conservative and more traditional, uh, and that there were Southerners that were more liberal uh, and more open to denominationalism, right? So there are individual uh, exceptions, but by and large, as these two groups form out of the Restoration Movement, um, you know, they're, they're forming uh, along some regional and economic lines. Again, theology is important. Right? The, the only reason, it's, it's not the only region, reason, right? And, and let me kind of say, that Dr. Harrell brings this up in this, this booklet, Emergence of the Church of Christ Denomination, that it wasn't just that churches of Christ were against instrumental music because they were too poor to buy organs. It, it wasn't just that. He's not saying that. But what he is saying is that, you know, alongside those that tended to be anti-instrumental were the ones that tended to be on the lower income scale in the South. They, it wasn't just about, all right, we're too poor to have a piano, so we're against instrumental music. But that was alongside, that was another component of instrumental, the instrumental music debate. So that's basically what Dr. Harrell's argument was in those books, right? That the, the split is happening not just with theology, but there's sociological and historical uh, cultural contexts that are shaping this as well. And 
in in this book that we're talking about, Emergence of the Church of Christ Denomination, um, and, and then also in his, his other work, works as well, Dr. Harrell says there's not really a split in two, but there's a split in three that's taking place in the 19th century. That what's happening is there is a group that is holding on to the sect mindset. We are the true church. We have separated ourselves from the world. We are, uh, you know, trying to live in a countercultural type of way. And there is a group that is more denominational, much more at home in culture, much more at home in, among different religious groups. And then there is a third group that is kind of a middle of the road group that has institutionalized, brought forth the, the uh, aspects of institutionalization, but still has the sect mindset of we are the true church and, and others have fallen away. So that group, what would eventually become the independent Christian churches, sometimes referred to as the Christian churches and churches of Christ, because they will sometimes use church of Christ, even though they're instrumental, um, that group incorporates missionary societies, they incorporate state boards, um, you know, they, many of them are instrumental music, though not all. Um, so they have some elements of institutionalizing, right, different societies, organizations, but they aren't as home in the culture or the denominational mindset as what becomes the Disciples of Christ. So the booklet then is looking more on, okay, in the middle of the 20th century, Harold argues, the same kind of thing is taking place within the churches of Christ that had taken place within the restoration movement in the 19th century. That there are three groups developing. And, and now that we sit here at the beginnings of the 21st century, or really into the, you know, almost the first third of the 21st century, um, we can see that, I, I think if we, if we were honest, we can see that, that Harold's right, that that's what was developing, that you have a, a group that has a strong sect mindset. We are the true, we are the faithful, the remnant, we are countercultural. You have a group that is much more at home in the denominational world and and looks at itself in a very denominational type of way, right? We're 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 one among many. Uh, you know, we're uh, we're not as countercultural. And then you have this group in the middle that is kind of the institutionalized sect. They still have some of the countercultural ideas. They still have some of the faithful remnant concepts, but they are uh, predominantly. Um, you know, institutionalized. Uh, there, there are organizations, there are societies that that are a part of the identity. Now, our first response to hearing something like that might be, no, 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 that's not us, or that's not my church, or, or that's not true. Uh, you know, that's not what the church is supposed to be. But again, that's a theological argument, not a historical or sociological argument. Now, for Harold, Harold grew up and, and still is part of what is sometimes referred to as the non-institutional um, wing of the Church of Christ. They're sometimes referred to as antis, um, although they, uh, you know, that's, that's a disparaging term. That's not a term that they, they like. Um, but this is a group that is largely opposed to the support of certain organizations from the church treasury. They're not uh, against, for example, Christian colleges. Florida College uh, in Temple Terrace, Florida, uh, represents one of these um, colleges within the non-institutional wing. Um, but that, that uh, college is not supported by church budgets, right? The, they don't take money from churches. Uh, individuals support it. They get support from tuition, obviously. Um, but not from, from churches. So it's not like there's a complete absence of organizations within the anti, uh, within the non-institutional wing, but it's, uh, you don't have the same kind of uh, 
a thing like you have here at Faulkner, right? There are churches that support Faulkner University out of their budgets. Well, Harold grows up and, and still, uh, you know, worships in that wing. And so he sees both himself and, um, and that wing as, as being a, a sect mindset. And there's that separatist uh, type of mindset. Um, and then, of course, there's the, on the other end is the, the full progressive side of the Church of Christ which um, which has kind of found itself, uh, you know, open to denominational cooperation, uh, recognizing itself as uh, one denomination among many. And so there are people um, within the Church of Christ, right? They haven't fully split. They might still meet with, in a building with a name on it, uh, but they have a very denominational type of mindset. And then there is that middle group where probably most people within the, that identify as Church of Christ or that worship at a building that has the name Church of Christ on it fit somewhere in that middle of what Harold calls the institutionalized sect. Now, again, we, we might not like that from a theological standpoint, but that, I mean, from a sociological standpoint, I think we have to be honest and say, okay, that's where, where we are. We, we have some institutions, educational institutions. Uh, we have missionary institutions. Um, there are, you know, other types of networks that exist. We, in a sense, if we're going to define denomination in the sense of having a national organization that provides guidance for the entire movement as a whole, then no, there, you know, there isn't that kind of organization. But there are these kind of de facto um, examples of leadership, right? Uh, looking to certain journals, right? right? If you think the Gospel Advocate is a pretty sound journal and is good for teaching, uh, you know, certain preachers are, are sound preachers, uh, others aren't. Um, Right. So there's some things like that where there's a de facto denominationalism, even though there's not a um, an actual denominational board or, or national organization. Um, so, you know, while there isn't that kind of component, um, we might say, OK, well, we're not a nomination. True. But if we're talking in a sociological standpoint, I think that in, in many cases, what we're seeing in a lot of places that have Church of Christ on the sign, um, we are much more at home in American culture. We are much more open to listening to influences from other religious groups um, than certainly we were in the middle 20th century, let alone the 19th century. And, and so, you know, one of the things we have to come to grips with here is whether or not sociologically we have, the churches of Christ have become denominational or, or at least institutionalized uh, in, in a sense of, you know, we're, we're not the faith, totally the, the idea of the faithful remnant separate and apart. We're, we're kind of this quasi-denominational, we have some separatism from the culture around us, but we're kind of more at home than we've been, than our parents, I mean, probably our grandparents were, if, if we have that, like that heritage, um, you know, in that, that generational uh, connection there. So what does all of that mean? Well, I, I think from a theological standpoint, we have to come to grips with, with some challenging questions um, of if that's not who we want to be, what does it take to turn that around, right? If, if, if we're wanting to say, all right, so sociologically we're a denomination, is there anything, or, or at least close to denominational uh, for the mainstream or, or the, the middle of the road, the moderate group, um, is there a way to turn that around? Harold would argue no, um, that, that our options are these, right? These are what the religious options 
are and kind of once you head down that path most of the religious group is going to head down that path uh, there may be the development of a new sect right a new group that splits off but once that sect grows it you know it, it goes into these these movements some will mean this the sect some will become denominations um, so what do we do can we overcome that uh, Harold would argue no um, I don't know that I necessarily would say you know agree with him totally but it does represent a challenge for us in thinking about okay what does it mean to be the non-denominational church or what to be the church right because you know the idea of being non-denominational is not a it's not a scriptural term <laughs> Right, because they didn't, you know, those kind of things, that kind of terminology didn't exist when when scripture was written. Although I think the concept uh, is pretty much found within scripture in the sense of right, we're not meant to be one among many; we're meant to be one. But what that one looks like is the challenge that I think remains before us in thinking about okay, what kind of religious group are we a part of what kind of uh, you know what kind of identity do we have beginning you know here as we move into the 21st century um, and what this what this challenge means for us moving forward the, you know these are some very important questions that I don't totally have all the answers to uh, and and so what I do say think is that you know dr. Harrell is right sociologically there's some changes that are taking place um, or have been taking place are coming to fruition blossoming now that uh, that will have an impact on us going forward